Behold the relics of this forgotten doom, the heads that marked the ties between men of the cracked clay earth and the gods of heaven's pearly hearth. Bereft of their golden plate, once brighter than the prince's fate, glinting across the continent. Now lions bask in zebra's realm, and bird of prey with mouth of foam meander through these empty lands. And a tourist in today's modern dress gawks and box at the ancient mess, a tribute to the power now gone. Who are the gods that created this space now to fall? The guest, shocked in the grip of behold, unbeknownst to them in the moment of old, themselves created these heads of power. With sneaker shoes and sweaty head, that funny tourist made this bed in which the relics lay. Hi everyone, long time no see, it's good to be back. In this video, I'm going to be sharing um, sort of what I've been up to in the past month and a half or so. I will cover and define what a smart stage is. I will share with you the specifics of the smart stage I was working with this summer. And then I'll show you how to take your assets from Blender and put them into Unreal Engine, texture them with Quixel Bridge, and then place those assets into an environment in Unreal Engine, and then set that environment up for final filming on a smart stage with a live actor. So myths aside, let's chat about what's actually going down here. Recently, I had the good fortune to work with a smart stage. For those of you who don't know, a smart stage is an LED panel or multiple LED panels that are arranged to form a stage or a background. The panels are fed into a multi-core computer hooked up to a technician's operating system with various software. In simple terms, the stage acts like a monitor would. LED displays used in a hybrid virtual real, real production workflow requires a tracking system that keeps track of the camera and any real things in scene. The stage I was working with used a MOSIS tracking system. The production room had reflective stickers on the ceiling called a star map that allowed a tracking device mounted on the camera to continually report the position and orientation of the camera in real time to a rendering engine. Instantaneous tracking of the camera is integral to real-time capture. There are many different tracking methods beyond MOSIS. This star map method is one of many. Realistic capture is made possible by syncing the location of the camera with a virtual camera within the rendering engine. Otherwise, the feed on the LED wall would remain static and undimensional. It would not shift perspective correctly alongside the studio camera. While the physical camera is recording the environment displayed on the stage, a keying program fills in the environment beyond the LED panels with the feed from the synced virtual camera. This allows the camera person to take wide shots or to pan and otherwise film as if the scene was in a proper three-dimensional space. An effective keying software is absolutely integral for smaller budget productions. Unlike higher budget setups like the set of Mandalorian, where LED walls fill up most of the surrounding space, but why go through all this trouble when you could just use a green screen to do the same thing? Good question. One of the coolest aspects of a smart stage compared to a green screen setup is the immersiveness. When on stage, the actor can not only see the background behind them, but also in our setup, the actor could see the composited feed on a monitor behind the camera. This is partly possible because there is no keying required compared to traditional green screen work. Having keyed myself, this is a big plus. Notably, the issue of correctly lighting the subject is also somewhat solved as the actor is lit by the light of the LED panels. I also think that compared to the green screen, the smart stage allows traditional cinematographers and directors of photography to work more intuitively because the scene on the LED display, in camera, and on monitor is much closer to that of the final composite. Creating an artificial environment that can be captured similarly to the real world allows for industry professionals to maintain a certain kind of artistic process. On the flip side, there are a number of downsides to the smart stage at a small scale. Bounce light on the stage from lights illuminating the actor was a problem, as was natural shadow from props to actors. 
The in-camera moray caused by the LEDs running at a low hertz is also quite noticeable. I also noticed excessive heat and brightness emanating from the stage, which could be uncomfortable for the talent and crew. Despite color calibration via Disguise, the fill program, the screen display was often a slightly different shade compared with the virtual environment. And finally, and most significantly, the smart stage is hella expensive in terms of hardware and in terms of energy costs, especially compared to a green screen. I wanted to put myself in a world that was vast and showcased assets that were super big because the freedom and scale is so amazing in virtual space. Lately, I've been sculpting with my Wacom tablet, just practicing proportions and getting a feel for it. The works were not complete. But the thing about completeness is that we see it as the final stage, where in truth it's only one of many. After a thing is at its prime, it starts to change, falls apart. A thing before and after it's quote finished can sometimes be more similar to each other than what's in between. With this idea in mind, I decided to use my practice sculpts as huge relics or ancient ruins from a lost civilization. So I dug them up and got my heads in a row. In order to efficiently add textures to these sculpts in Unreal Engine via Quixel Bridge, the sculpts must be exported with a properly unwrapped UV map. To do this, create a new UV image, go to Edit Mode, Select All, hit U, uh, and Smart Unwrap the Object. Set the angle limit to 65 and make sure that there is some island margin. Next, export each object as an FBX. Most of the parameters just leave as is. Go to the Geometry tab and change the smoothing to Face. Then select Apply Modifiers. I tried to import the sculpts without doing this, but it didn't work. Open Unreal Engine. I'm using UE4. This is the default workspace. You'll see the content browser down at the bottom there. And then just right click and create a new folder. I titled it Ruins. This is really helpful to stay organized. Now open your, your file browser and then just simply drag and drop the XBX, FBX files into that new folder we created. You can go ahead and select import all at this point. And now we're just dragging and dropping the heads into the viewport and arranging them, rotating them so that um, they look more aesthetically pleasing. They're kind of in a more artistic arrangement. So there's definitely shortcuts for these, but I don't quite know them yet. On the right hand side, you can adjust the scale, the location, the rotation, etc. Okay, so now we're in Quixel Bridge. I'm logged into my account. I've got it downloaded on my laptop. I've navigated to my purchase category. So I already purchased this, well, downloaded this um, material called Cracks, Cracked Hexagon Tiles. What's really nice about uh, Bridge is that there's this little sort of showcase section on top where you can flip through the PBR maps. I really like that feature. And then here we're gonna go and do the quick export option. This option allows you to like immediately import the material into an open Unreal project file. As you can see, um, the material appears here in the content browser under surfaces in its own folder called cracked hexagon tiles. And then you can just drag and drop the material onto your assets in the viewport. So we'll just try another one to get a feel for it. So select the material, download it. You really only need to download in 2K resolution. And then you can hit export and you'll see, bam, there's that new material and you can drag and drop it onto your assets in the viewport. What's really cool is that all of the PBR materials, so the different maps are pre-linked for you. You don't have to go in and hook those up yourself in the material editor. Okay, so let's take some time to have a look under the hood here and scroll down to materials and double click that thumbnail there, that preview, and it brings up this, this window. 
And you can see all of the PPR maps, the roughness, the normal, the albedo, all here, all toggled on. And when you go all the way down to general and you see the, the parent material, MS default material, double click on that. And you're brought into this material editor where you can see the node map. And what we're seeing here is like the template material to which the uh, hexagon tile material is mapped. So we've got the tiling, the textures, and the adjustments. So this is like the default material map, the one that um, Quixel Bridge is using to map chosen materials to. Okay, great. So say you wanted to like customize this a little bit, adjust a few of the parameters. You can go down, like let's go down to normal and let us adjust the normal strength. Just push the values up a bit and see, kind of this, behold the changes. Okay, so that's looking pretty intense. It kind of looks like fudgy chocolate, fudgy chocolate cookie. Um, and let's check that out in the viewport. Oh, wow. So see, that's a big difference. The cracks are really popping out there. I think for our use case, for our purposes, we don't actually need the normal strength to be so intense. So let's bring that back down to about one. So now we know how to sort of customize those materials to our tastes. Right, so now that we have the materials all organized, let's go to the Epic Games Marketplace and search in Unreal Environments. I search Desert. I want these heads to like be really massive in the space and because deserts are such vast space, I think the scale will look very natural in this environment. So let's do a bit of shopping. We can preview the different content packs available. The first thing we decided when bringing in the sculpts into this new environment in a separate Unreal project was where I would be standing on the smart stage so that we could arrange everything in relation to that stage blocking. So we settled on me standing right in front of that hole you see in the foreground. So I'm just moving the rocks around, I'm moving the heads to create a more aesthetic shot, thinking about the shots we might take on stage. In the course of doing this, I learned a quick viewport shortcut. If you select an object and hit F, then you get taken straight to that object. Also, this environment came with an awesome animal content pack, so we've got these cute little lions here. That's a wrap. Thanks for tuning into my learning process, my learning journey. Reflecting on the last bit of that video, I wanted to say how cool it was to see my sculpts in Unreal Engine sitting cohesively in a fully fleshed out environment. It's the closest I've ever come to seeing my artwork in what is essentially a game. So that was a very dope moment. If you have a goal of potentially working at a game studio or creating your own game, using your own art, bringing something simple into Unreal Engine and just seeing it in that environment um, can be very inspiring. Feels a bit like a power up, or it did for me. Highly recommend. If you enjoyed this video and want to support me, you can join my Patreon. I'll be posting the sculpts that you saw in this video there on that platform. If not, check out my socials, follow me there. I'd also love to hear from you if you found this video useful in learning Unreal Engine for the first time or useful in setting up your own virtual production environment. I would love to hear what you're working on, so tag me on those projects. Catch you in the next one. Peace.